I worked with biomass stoves in Managua, Nicaragua. I worked with wood-burning stoves and solar stoves in Cochabamba, Bolivia. I worked on a water scheme for a small village in Cumba, Camp. I worked on a biodigester in Comitancio, Guatemala. I worked on solar cookers in Nicaragua. I worked on water supply systems in the southwest province of Cameroon. I worked on photovoltaic technology in Pakistan. I worked on rocket stoves and solar cookers in Cochabamba, Bolivia. I worked with biogas digesters in Comitancio, Guatemala. I did ethos. I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to go into engineering when I started here. It was just kind of, you know, I like math, I like science, let's try this. Um, and just the teachers, you know, the faculty, everyone have made me love it. And this, the ethos immersion trip, it's just, it makes me want to pursue it even more to help people through my engineering. ETHOS stands for Engineers and Technical Humanitarian Opportunities of Service Learning. It is a program that was developed in 2001 by a group of undergraduate students to provide um, service immersions in developing countries to engineering students. ETHOS really reflects on what engineering should be all about and that's making life better for a lot of people. I basically had a better understanding of how I could use my, use my degree in engineering or uh, what I've learned in classes to apply to real world situations. It also gives you these other tools in your tool belt. The ability to deal with people, the ability to communicate across language barriers. These things that as we enter into a global economy, a global system, you're going to need to be able to do. The focus of ethos is appropriate technology. So um, students get to learn about emerging technologies that are culturally appropriate and sustainable, um, while at the same time serving basic human need. The best engineering solution for developing countries is not the best engineering solution um, as defined by our rules. Our rules usually dictate the most efficient design, um, the most power. We need instead to first look at what is available within these regions to use as a solution, and then we can design a solution with our understanding of technology to meet the needs of the people there. Okay, the big picture problem was basically fighting indoor air pollution. Because people already have methods to cook their food. They know you need fire to cook the food. A lot of the times, people just have a fire inside their house and stick a pot right on top of it. That's what people are breathing in when they're in the house while that stove is being used. A double burner rocket stove is what I call a ecological wood burning stove. It was just basically a rectangular box. It had two holes in the front. It has two combustion chambers that are more efficient because it allows for oxygen to come up from underneath and allows the wood to burn extremely efficiently, which cuts down smoke by usually 60 to 80 percent. In Nicaragua, there's a lot of deforestation problems. So one, it's really hard for women or children to find wood. They spend a lot of hours a day looking for wood. A solar cooker is basically an oven that cooks with the heat of the sun. A wood box it has uh, lamb's wool inside of it, and it has a aluminum shell, and then there's a dual layer of glass that uh, acts as a cover. And there's usually some sort of a reflector that reflects more of the sun into the box. Photovoltaics in any way, they're very good for standalone systems and what the gov government did was they provided each and every household with an 80 watt solar panel. And 80 watts means that they could run about one small fan and about six lights. And they were also provided with a battery. The battery could run for three days, assuming it was cloudy weather. When I was based in the desert, uh, an hour's journey by Jeep. And I was um, working on the operations and maintenance of the photovoltaic systems, which, which they had installed in a couple of villages in the area on a pilot basis. As far as global insulation rates is, as in how much solar energy can be utilized, Pakistan is easily in the higher level in the whole world. In the coming years, there's going to be a massive energy crisis, and Pakistan's no different. In fact, there's already an electricity shortage. And so, in these remote places, there's really no chance of the national electric grid getting to these places within the next 20, 30 years. And so, you really need some sort of standalone remote systems, and there's really no better system than photovoltaic technology.
I worked to develop a water scheme for a small village in Kumba, Cameroon. People did not have means to clean drinking water. They said that they, they get their water from a stream. It's about a kilometer and a half from the village. In the dry season, the stream, uh, the stream near their village it dries up, so they take their water from the lake. The water that they're drinking is extremely contaminated. We realized how many problems they were having from waterborne illnesses because they didn't have clean water and they couldn't um, sanitize anything. Basically did a topographical survey from a source they identified to the village uh, which would essentially be a proposed pipeline at a 50 meters higher elevation. So ideally the water would be able to be pumped by gravity to the village. It'll have a catchment at the front to gather the water, collect the amount that we decide that the village needs, and then a pipeline will run from that catchment. It would not be appropriate to implement a a system in which water was pumped mechan mechanically by a pump that would either require electri electricity, which the village has none, or uh, gasoline. If you want to go beyond the books and beyond math, beyond science, um, then I'd say Ethos is for you. When I talk about Ethos, I often talk about it as an exemplar of uh, what we're all about as a university. I think the Ethos program perfectly demonstrates what it is to be Catholic Marianists. Serving others, belonging to a new community, fighting for justice. I was supposed to co-op last summer and I decided to do Ethos instead. And I'm also supposed to co-op this summer <laughs> and again I'm doing Ethos instead. It's about challenging students. It's about making sure students reach their potential, asking them to do a little bit more. I thought that the Ethos experience was the best experience I've probably ever had in my entire life. I felt truly privileged to be able to grow as a person. Had I not found Ethos, I wouldn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I would have come out of UD exactly how I went into it. They usually go on these immersions sort of in the back of the head that they're going to save the world, but it ends up that the world saves them because they have a new perspective on engineering. Learning another culture through immersion, serving basic human need. It was a life-changing experience. That's what UD is all about.